Hi everyone and welcome back. I thought I would go into a little more detail to show you my latest eBay purchase, the Realistic 465, the TRC 465. Um, here we have it. I have it turned on here. I have the volume turned down. There's a lot of skip going on today. And I didn't really go into details of the feature of it. Here we have, we have our upper sideband, AM lower sideband. Um, we have the automatic noise limiter. If you have engine noise in your car, have this mounted in your car, you can turn it on to um, cut out some of the noise. Here we have the CB and PA. Um, I don't know why you'd want a PA. Maybe if you were back in high school, you might use that. Also, we have our volume squelch, RF gain, and the clarifier. What I also liked when I purchased this was it came with the with the original owner's manual. And kind of nice to have that. I, I read through it. Pretty interesting. Then up here on my computer screen, I have the original catalog from 1990 Radio Shack, and it shows the TRC 465 here. Said it was their best sideband radio and it sold for $199.95 and like I said this was made from 1990 to 96 and as you can say see it says realistic now I wanted to show you something interesting here here I have pulled up in the catalog the last year they made it in 1996 and as you can see the price went down to $169.99. And also what I found int is interesting is they were no longer called Realistic. They changed the name to Radio Shack. I don't know if they maybe sold the Realistic name. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, how to tell if you don't know how to read the date code in the back is... Um, if here says Radio Shack, that means it was produced in 1996, the last year they made the TRC 465. Um, you might find this interesting if you can see this. I went back and I looked in the Radio Shack catalogs. I was curious what years they made the sideband radios. And they actually started producing them in 1973 all the way up to 1998. And as you can see, the original price is in here. Uh, my particular radio, the TRC465, when it came out, it was $199.95. I actually went and looked at the inflation index for that year. And in today's dollar, that would be $400. So they were by no means a cheap radio. And then speaking of date codes, if you look at the back, this applies to any um, Radio Shack radio. You're going to see a date code here. The first digit is the month it was produced. So this would have been September. A is just a separator. And then the nine would be the year. Now I know these were produced in 1990 when they were first sold. So I know this one was made actually back in September of 89 before they released them. So like I said in my other video, this was one of the first ones produced. Okay, here we have the radio again. And I was going to show you there's four adjustments in here. I'm not going to open it up again like I did last time. But like I said in my last video, I played around with the settings on a couple of them, which I probably should not have done without the proper equipment. But let me briefly uh, tell you what they do. The first one was the sensitivity of the meter here. And I didn't touch that one because I figured uh, the factory setting was good on that. The modulation, the automatic control on that, I played around with that. I had turned that up all the way and which I shouldn't have done. It was over modulating. I could tell that when I was doing it on transmitting to another radio. It was loud, but it wasn't wasn't very clear. Once I turned it down back to where it was, where it's supposed to go, it wasn't bleeding on any of the other channels. Same with the ALC. I put that back. That has to deal with sideband. 
and I was able to almost double what the peak reading was on my sideband. And reality, it should only be around 12 watts. And I found a way to demonstrate that. So let me let me show you what I did um, to make that work. I just realized I can't play my tone through the sound generator and record at the same time because it's on the phone. And once I start recording, it cuts off. But I'll demonstrate what I did, did here. I played a thousand hertz tone through my microphone. And when it plays on the sideband, this is the reading I get. It's right around um, 12 watts, which is where it should be. And where I had it before, I was getting, if I was probably getting close to 30. And now I realize that was bleeding over onto the other channels. And it probably didn't sound very good on another radio. So I put it to uh, where it was. I had taken a picture of the settings before I adjusted them. And to me, that looks right where it should be. If anyone has a comment on that, uh, please feel free to leave a comment on that. Now, if we look out, look at the watts I'm putting out, I did adjust the watt control in there, the AM carrier. And as you can see here, eh, reading a little higher, it, it varies, uh, but it's probably reading around five watts. And a thing I've discovered, depending on the temperature and time of day, it can go anywhere from four watts to four and a half watts. So I have the radio right now on channel one uh, where I have my best SWR reading. So I, I feel that that's probably a pretty accurate reading of how many watts I'm putting out. Well, here we are back at the radio again. Uh, there's quite a bit of skip going on today. I haven't been able to make any contact yet, so I don't know if it's because of my antenna, if it's not high enough. I do know I've been able on AM to get out around six to eight miles. So I'm not too sure on that. Maybe I just have to have better skip conditions. But I, I think I'll show you a couple of, um, show, show you channel six of Super Bowl and then channel 38 lower sideband and we'll finish it off there. And here we have the Super Bowl channel. Boy, these guys are so over modulating. I bet if you live near them, they're bleeding on onto all 40 channels. All right, here we are on. Here we have. Channel 38 lower sideburn getting a little skip sideburn sorry. I'm in Nevada here. It looks like we're picking up uh, Ontario, Canada. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching. Um, please leave comments and subscribe if you uh, like what you see. Thanks again and see you next time.